Hello everyone, Frank here with another YouTube video. If you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should, but maybe I'm just being biased. Anywho, today we will be covering Kubernetes services. Why do we need services in Kubernetes? Good question. With deployments, we can run multiple number of pods and scale up or down easily. However, with a great number of pods and or scalability comes great responsibility. Meaning, each one of these pods that are launched have a unique IP address. If a pod is terminated due to bad health or for scaling purposes, IP addresses will change. So naturally, the problem that arises is that you need a reliable way to access these pods. The solution? Well, a Kubernetes service object. I like to think of a Kubernetes service as a virtual network level load balancer that provides us with a reliable static IP address and DNS hostname. Here is a good diagram of a Kubernetes service that I found on Google Images. Credit to MatthewPalmer.net as you can see in the URL. Up here. As you can see, a service object sits in front of our pods. Now just imagine that service with a static IP address and hostname. Let's go ahead and create a quick Elasticsearch deployment which will launch our pods. You can see my previous video on Kubernetes deployment if you need a refresher. So let's go ahead and minimize this real quick. So in our terminal, let's do kubectl git pods. We see that we currently have no pods running. We'll do a kubectl git deployments. And uh, we see that we have no deployment. So I'll go ahead and do kubectl apply dash f for file. And I have a deployments directory already here with an Elasticsearch YAML file, which is kind of similar to the one I did in that video that I was talking about earlier where I covered Kubernetes deployments. Again, if you haven't watched it, go ahead and, you know, Go watch it. <laughs> so, all right, I went ahead and applied it. Uh, you can see that it says Elasticsearch deployment created. So, well, let me just, okay, scroll up, get deployments. And we see that we have a Elasticsearch dash deployment there. So, kubectl get pods. We can see that it's currently starting up. So, let's give it some time for it to fully start up. We can do dash dash watch. Oh, okay. We see it's already one or one ready. So now that we have our pod up and running, we can define a service object to be able to reach our Elasticsearch reliably. So let me go ahead and uh, um, get visual code up. Let me, you know, we're going to do an Elasticsearch.yaml file. So let's go ahead and uh, define our API version. In this case, we'll use the version one core API. Then we're going to specify the kind of Kubernetes object. In this case, it's going to be a service. We're going to define some metadata. And okay, so we're going to name this Elastic Search. So depending on what you put for name, uh, that's going to be the internal DNS host name that other pods will use to be able to resolve to this uh, service. So for example, if I launch another pod for Kibana and I need to configure a Elasticsearch URL, I would do the name and then the port. So in this case, I'm just going to call it Elasticsearch. We can also define some labels to better manage our service. In this case, I'm going to give it the app elastic search label. And then I'm going to specify that this is for my dev environment. Now, let's go ahead and actually do a spec which will specify our service settings or options. So here, we're going to define a selector. And under the selector, we wanted to manage all deployments that have the following label or not deployment, sorry, pods that have this label. So app elastic search. And then we want to specify our ports. And I'm going to do port 9200, which is the default elastic search uh, port. 
So I'm going to save that. Let's go back to our terminal and do a cube cuddle apply dash f. And this one's under my services directory, elastic search service. So let's go ahead and do cube cuddle apply dash f services slash elastic service. Boom. Cube cuddle get services. We can see that we now have a Elasticsearch service running with a virtual IP of 10.128.212.49. So we can see it has no external IP assigned as by default service object search service objects that are declared without a type default to cluster IP, which basically just assigns an internal virtual IP address to the service. And we can see that our port is 9200. So that's how you get a Elasticsearch service defined. Let's do kubectl get pods and let's enter our pod real quick to test the DNS. Bash. Okay. So here, if we try to ping Elasticsearch, it should resolve to the IP address that was assigned to our service. So. So you can see it resolves to elasticsearch.default.svc.cluster.local with the IP address that we have up here. So uh, we went ahead and declare our Elasticsearch service. Let's go ahead and launch a Kibana deployment so our Kibana pods can use this Elasticsearch endpoint. So here is my Kibana deployment file. We can see that I am using a config map to specify my Elasticsearch host. So let me go ahead and open my Kibana config map. In my Kibana config map, you can see that I am using the HTTP slash Elasticsearch uh, colon 9200 um, as the Elasticsearch host. So in this case, since we specified our Elasticsearch service, our pod will be able to resolve this uh, DNS host name. So let me go ahead and apply my Kibana deployment. So we can do deployments, oops, deployments, Kibana, YAML. And just a heads up, I already had those uh, config maps created uh, prior to the recording of the video. So if I do kubectl git config maps, you can see that I have my Kibana config map here. And if I do kubectl git config maps dash o, oops, let me specify the actual name of the config map, then dash o yaml. You can see here that I am specifying the uh, Elasticsearch host as 9200, or well, port 9200 with the host name of Elasticsearch. Sorry about that. Um, so okay, let's do kubectl git deployments. We see that our Kibana deployment has been created. Now we do kubectl git pods, and we can see that my Kibana pod is still uh, getting ready. So let me just pause it right now and I'll get back to this. Okay, so we see that our Kipana deployment pod is now ready, one of one. So let's go ahead and drop in real quick to our Kipana pod and make an, oops, sorry, and make a uh, Elasticsearch API call. So we can do curl dash x, oops, dash x, git, HTTP elastic search and then we're going to specify our port of 9200 slash cat slash help and we can see that we are able to reach our elastic search uh, pod and our service from the Kibana pod that we are in right now. So now let's go ahead and expose our Kibana panel to a public IP and we can do that by specifying a service object with the type of node port. So let's go ahead and go back here and close this out under services. Oops, under services, let me close this. We want to specify our API version. In this case, we'll stick with V1. 
we are going to specify our Kubernetes object as service. And then we are going to also specify some metadata. And in this case, I'm going to give it the name of just Kibana. And then let's add some labels so we can identify this better. App Kibana. And then environment dev. Just a heads up, Kibana by default offers no authentication. So be wary that if you are exposing this to the internet, um, you probably shouldn't do that without authentication. So be sure to lock it down at a network level. Um, in this case, I'm just doing this for testing and I'll delete it right after this video. So, so let's go ahead and specify some things. In this case, our selector is going to look for all pods that have the app Kibana label. And then we want to actually specify our service type this time around. And in this case, we're going to do a node port. And if you see here back to our diagram, a node port is basically a port that's uh, exposed on the actual Kubernetes worker node. So we're able to reach it, you know, the worker node has a public IP and we can reach that uh, service from that public IP and node port combination. I hope that makes sense. Um, <laughs> if I'm being too confusing, don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments. As always, I'm happy to help. So back to here, we're specifying the type node port. Then we're going to go to ports. And then we're going to do dash protocol. And we're going to use TCP. We're going to use port, port 5601, which is the default Kibana port. And we're going to specify a node port of 3200-601. Now, um, in Kubernetes, the valid node port range is 30,000 through 32,767. So this is between that range, so we're good. I'm going to go ahead and save that file. Let's go back to our command line. Control L to clear, kubectl git services, and we can see that we have Elasticsearch right now. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the service YAML file we just created, services kibana. And now when we do git service, we can see our kibana service is listed as node port as the type and an IP address an internal IP address followed with a port. Now I have a custom function in my bash RC file that gets me my public uh, Kubernetes worker node IPs. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. Oops. Yeah, it's kip, not kips. Uh, I'll probably share this in the description below in case you're interested. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy one of my worker node public IP addresses open a new tab, paste, and I'm going to specify the node port number that we specified in the Kibana YAML file, which is 32601. And as you can see, our Kibana uh, deployment is now exposed for it to load. Awesome. I'll just explore on my own. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to post in the comments below. I'm happy to answer. And yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if I was able to help out. Thank you.